Sending payments in Ripple's native currency, XRP. A Ripple account that has received the minimum balance of XRP that's required to create an account in the ledger may send that XRP, often referred to as Ripple's, to any other account on the network that supports it. XRP is Ripple's native currency because its properties differ from those of all other currencies on the system, in that XRP are not issued by a user of the network, but are generated at the genesis or beginning of a new Ripple network by a fixed algorithm. To send XRP to another account, you must first construct a payment transaction object in JSON format, including the public address of the desired recipient and the amount of XRP you want to send. Next, you must sign the transaction so the network can verify your will to send XRP to another user. And Ripple Lib uses a digital signature algorithm to cryptographically sign the document. The signature and its hash are then attached to the payment JSON object. Submit the signed payment, payment transaction to a Ripple D server and it will validate your cryptographic signature. Finally, your payment will be broadcast to the network worldwide and the Ripple D validator participants will vote on your transaction into the database and you will receive a WebSocket message to notify you of the payment's successful acceptance in the ledger. Now the next step is to actually see this in practice using the Ripple Lib JavaScript library. And I'll show you the simplest way to send payments, which is using XRP, which require no trust in a third party. This is your first time using the Ripple Lib JavaScript library for interacting directly with the network. So <clears throat> I'm gonna first run through how to get started with the API. We're using Ripple Lib, which is the official JavaScript library for the Ripple API. And in order to interact with the Ripple server, we need to establish a connection to one or more Ripple servers on the network. <clears throat> Usually this means connecting over secure, secure WebSockets, that's encrypted WebSockets, to a server that we trust or maybe a public server. There are some public servers right now that are being run for partners by Ripple Labs. And right on the readme is the quick start where you can create, it shows you how to create a simple default remote object. A remote object basically represents your connection to a server. And using this remote object, you can send all the different types of transactions into the network and you can read the database, the distributed database from Ripple. The first thing to do is require Ripple Lib. So I'm going to call this program sendxrp.js. So remote equals require ripple lib dot remote. Then I'm going to use the default remote and I'll walk you through what these mean. Trusted means that you trust this uh, server not to steal your credentials. And usually we want to have trusted to be false, just so that it, the library doesn't accidentally submit uh, your secret key to a server. Either way, you want local signing to be true. And what that means, and that's the next setting, local signing true. And that means Java, Ripple Lib JavaScript library will compute the cryptographic hash and signature for all of your payments and transactions before you send them to the network, rather than sending them to the network along with your secret key where your Ripple server, Ripple D server, could then sign it. You don't want to send your Ripple, your secret key over the network or to anyone at all. So that's why we do local signing. And down in it, the server section will specify the s1.ripple.com which is a default server that currently you can connect to. You can, anyone hosting a 
Ripple D server uh, can use that server to connect this library. And then finally, we call remote.connect And that will establish a connection to the server. And then I'm just going to console.log. Connected to the Ribble network at s1.ribble.com. Now, in order to run this program, I say node send xrp.js. And that will connect us to the Ripple network. Awesome. Now we can start creating and submitting transactions. So I'm going to open up our sin.xrp and we want to now construct a new payment transaction. If we look in the RippleLib GitHub repo for on the guides page, there is a uh, guide for sending a payment to the network. In order to send a payment using our remote connection to a RippleD server, we need to add our account and our account secret to the remote, then construct a transaction object, and then send that object or submit it to the Ripple network. Here's a very simple way um, illustrating how to do that here. We've already connected our remote and now we need to set secret. So, remote.connect. I'm going to call remote.set secret. And I'll set my address and my secret later. And then I'm going to create a new transaction. And then once I have a transaction, a transaction is just any entry in the Ripple database. So I will then create a payment transaction. So I'll say payment transaction.payment. And what that does is it transforms this transaction into a payment type. And a payment type requires three parameters. The um, account address that's sending from, the account address sending to, and the amount. And the amount in this case is just going to be XRP. Um, a number of XRP. In other cases, it could be a, a different type of currency and it would require a account issuer. But this is just XRP. So we have two and I'm going to say this is um, recipient and then from is my address and then the amount is going to be uh, the amount. And in order to create the amount, we need to use uh, amount dot from the amount dot from human method. And that will just take uh, one XRP. Sorry, I misspelled that. Amount from human. And then this amount object is global to the ripple lib library. So var amount equals require ripple, ripple lib. There we go. Okay, now I just need to set my address and my secret and we'll be good to go. Well, I'll set my address and my secret and then I will uh, submit this transaction. And okay, so I need to specify the recipient uh, address and my address. Um, 
and my secret, and then we'll be good to go. So var my address equals var my secret equals, and then var recipient equals. Okay, so I have two accounts set up here. One account that is not funded yet, and one account that is funded and it has 50 XRP. So I'm going to use the unfunded account as the recipient account and the um, funded account as my personal account. So I'll copy over my personal account Ripple address into my address and then to find my secret I'll go to the wallet and then security, show my keys and copy over my key and then I will go over to my recipient and click receive and then grab that address and that will now be the recipient of this payment. Now when I submit the payment I should, should be able to look at the client and see it actually happen. So I'll go to transaction.submit and I'll just log the error and the response. Okay, now if I run the program, I should connect and then I get an error. Uh, destination does not exist. Too little XRP to sent, sent to create it. Huh, so the problem with this is you need at least 20 XRP to, to fund an account and I only have zero. So I'm gonna go back to my program and change this to 25 XRP. And then I'm gonna run it again. I'm connected to the network, sending the payment, there we go. And you can see in the client that 25 XRP just arrived. Awesome. So now you know how to send a payment using XRP to another account. And so I just funded this new account. Now that this account has received a transaction, there is an entry for it in the ledger. And it's now part of the Ripple network and it can transact using the XRP or by other types of currency, which I will explain in the next video. And if you look back at the original account that sent the payment, um, you can see a record. You sent 25 XRP three minutes ago. Well, and my balance is now 24.99 XRP. That means 0, 0.00 something uh, XRP was taken out as a transfer fee. And we can go look in here and the fee is actually 15 units, which is drops, and um, one drop is equal to 10 to the sixth, or one million, or maybe 10 million, or 10 million drops equal one XRP. So 15 drops is a very slight amount. Um, the 25 XRP that I sent is actually 25 million drops.